Welcome to Stampissimo and thanks for joining. Well, winter is fast approaching and the nights are drawing in and I think we could all do something fun to distract us from the winter blues. And I'm certainly up for a cosy evening of crafting with some friends. Now, our theme today is winter treats and I'm very excited to welcome a lovely Stamping Up demonstrator from Northampton. So I'd like to welcome Joanne. It's great to have you here, Joanne. Thank Thanks you, Paula. It's great to be here. Now, I've had a sneak peek at Joanne's Crafty Treats, and I can tell you that they're so much fun. And I'm always amazed by what can be achieved when we put stamps, ink, and paper together. Now, I challenged Joanne to come up with some fun winter treats, and she certainly has risen to that challenge. time to get crafting. Now Joanne, should we take a look at your project? Yes, let's. So today, Paula, we're going to make this rather cute Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Fantastic. And we're going to make him using this, which is the curvy keepsake box thinlet die. Right, okay. How did you come up with the idea? Well, I have two young children and they always want to take in little treats for their classmates uh, nearer Christmas time and so uh, this is the perfect the perfect uh, treat box to send them in with. It's very easy to produce, you could do lots of them um, and just put a few sweets inside, it's very festive. Fantastic. Okay, so the first thing that you need is some chocolate chip cardstock that's actually cut as a square, so actually as a rectangle, so it will be okay. cut like that um, and measures eight and a quarter inches by seven and a half inches and then you're just going to cut it across the diagonal because then each of those uh, triangles will be suitable for the die and okay. you just need to snip the end off the short piece because when you put it onto your big shot so you need to put it onto your plate and your magnetic platform and the the die itself pretty much runs edge to edge you just okay. need to remove that excess on the one side okay. and then you simply Take your big shot and roll it through. We'll move Rudolph, shall we? I think we, we should. Don't want to injure we him. can't. No, no casualties. <laughs> no no casualties. casualties at this stage. And then you have the first part of your box template, which if you just okay. gently peel away, which looks like that. We just need to do another one of those. Oh, okay. Exactly the same. Right. So again, so we literally take our piece of cardstock and we just create another one. Okay. So we have our two pieces. So we have our two pieces, which so they look like that. And okay. what we're going to do is we're just going to put them together so they sit with their bases one on top of the other like so. Right. So you might find it helpful to just the score lines are already in place but if you just crease them up like that you can see the edges yeah. of the bottom square and in this instance I'm going to use fast fuse because it's right. a very strong um, adhesive and it's perfect for boxes and yeah. it's also very quick. You could also use something like sticky strip. Okay. Um, so we're just going to put that on the outer edges on the inside of one piece and on the outside of the other piece. Okay. And the reason for that is because when you actually put these together, they don't form a perfect square. Can you see? Yeah. In order to get the perfect square, the rounded corner just sits inside and you right. don't want your glue to kind of overhang. Okay. So, so Joanne, um, I know that your first career was in the finance services. So how did you find Stamping Up and what prompted you to join? Well, Paula, I attended a stamping up party that was held by a family friend and um, I, I just, I, I'd never, I was a very crafty person, um, done lots of different crafts uh -huh. before but I've never rubber stamped and I went along to this party not really with any high expectations to be fair because um, the, my, it was my mother-in-law that had invited me and she's a tr scrapbooker right. uh, traditionally and so I had something of a preconception but I went along and I loved it. I just, I loved the product range and 
it instantly appealed to me and I instantly wanted to make cards. And that's fantastic, especially as you hadn't stamped before. I had never stamped before, so I'd never used a rubber stamp before I came into contact with Stamping Up and now I am a devoted <laughs> stamper. You're a big fan. I am indeed, I am indeed. So, okay, so, yep, so the next on. stage of our project, we're just going to leave our box to one side for a moment okay. and we're going to bring in our one and three quarter inch circle punch because this is what we're going to use to make our reindeer's hat that his right. antlers are going to sit on. So you need, an, again, another piece of chocolate chip cardstock right. um, that's two inches broadly in width so you've got plenty right. of room. We're just going to punch a circle okay. and we just need to cut that in half using okay. our trimmer or some scissors if you're confident that you can get it. Obviously we want two nice clean semicircles. Right. So we're going to cut that in half like so. Okay, so then we take our semicircles and we just want to put the smallest amount of liquid glue around the very outside circular edge. Okay. Because this is going to form the hat that sits over the box right. to attach Rudolph's antlers. So we just okay. need to put that to one side now to dry. Right. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make his face. Okay. And to make his face, we're going to use the owl punch but we're just going to use the circles for the eyes so we need to take some whisper white cardstock right and we need to just pop that in there to get two large circles <laughs> there we go flying away okay. and then we just need some of the smaller circles with our basic black right okay. that was better stop them flying about there we go. Okay, so these and then eyes, right? once again, we're going to take our liquid glue. We're just going to attach those black dots to the white ones. Okay. So, Joanne, I read an article recently that stated that the crafting industry is growing year over year. So, it seems more people are getting involved with crafting. So, do you have any advice for crafters out there, or perhaps not yet crafters? Oh, absolutely, Paula. I think for those that already craft, um, there are more opportunities than ever yeah. to find great products and great ideas for things that they can use to either um, get themselves more involved in their existing crafts yeah. or new crafts. But if you're a new crafter, it's so easy. Um, handmade is very in vogue yeah, and absolutely. it's very nice to be able to actually make it yourself rather than purchase something that's handmade because yeah. then you also have that kind of that yeah. warm feeling of knowing Absolutely. that you made the gift. Well, it's so much more meaningful, isn't it, to the recipient? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And Wonderful. it's not as difficult as people sometimes think. Right. Well, you're certainly getting me hooked on this project. So Indeed. what's our next so step? We've set our eyes aside to dry. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make Rudolph's nose. Okay. Now, for Rudolph's nose, we're actually going to use a standard pearl. But we're going to colour them with our stamping up blendabilities markers right. these are the cherry cobbler set and we're going to take our red marker pen one of my favorite colors i must say oh it's, it's always perfect great for, for this Christmas. time isn't it yeah. exactly perfect for this time of year and these markers are so versatile um, obviously they're great if you want to color and create some really sort of streak free coloring but yeah. you can use them to color pearls you can color all kinds of embellishments and they're very useful and i particularly wanted rudolph to, his nose to have a little bit of definition yeah. and a little bit of shine so we can put our marker to one side we're just going to leave that to dry okay. uh, for a moment and we'll take our box and how long does that will that take to dry it will literally it will just take a few seconds right. but you want it to be sufficiently touch dry that i don't end up with yeah, hands that look like fingers. they've been christmas <laughs> indeed so we can take our box and i just need to um, shape the sides of the box with my bone folder okay so all we're going to do is just run the box very gently over the bone folder it just breaks down the fibers slightly and gives okay. that nice curved finish so we're going to do that on all four sides. And then once we've done that, we're going to take one of the handle sides right. and we're actually going to stick on our face. So we're going to take our eyes firstly, and again, just a little dab of glue. And we're going to stick those onto the side of the box, like so. 
Now, you're a mum of two, Joanne. You've got a boy and a girl. Are they into your crafting? Do they dabble? Oh, very much so. They both like to get involved, and mm -hmm. I often find them sneaking into my craft room, usually the youngest one looking for chocolates that oh. I've incorporated <laughs> in projects, but the, uh, the eldest one, she likes to get involved. And this project was actually chosen with her in mind because right. she loves to be able to use the big shot. I don't always trust her with my <laughs> inks and, and so on, um, although she does have have some inks and stamps of her very own that right. she likes to craft with but she ad absolutely adores rolling things through the big shot so this project she wanted to make some Christmas treats for her classmates right. and she can help me make them That's it's not even as if I need to make them myself yeah and it's wonderful that you can involve children like that and how do you fit it all in you're stamping up life and you're busy life as a mum? Stamping up is perfect for the busy mum because I'm very, very lucky. I uh, I gave up my kind of full-time job um, in quite uh, sort of uh, my career job, as it were, yeah. and wasn't really looking for another career, but I managed to find one that totally met my goals because stamping up is so flexible, I can fit it in around my family life so I can run my classes. Um, when it's convenient to me, I can still make that hockey match. I can still get my children to their piano lesson on time and I'm always there available to them but still able to That's run fantastic. a great business. So you feel it's it's meeting those needs both absolutely. as a, as a mum and a creative absolutely. entrepreneur. Absolutely <laughs> most definitely. Fantastic. Okay so the last thing we need to do is we need to give him a smile. So we're going to take our stamping right basic black marker and just doodle in okay. a little smile like so. There you go a happy Rudolph is what we like to see. Indeed. <laughs> and that's our basic box okay. complete. So you simply pull the handle pieces together and then loop over the outsides. And that's your basic box. But clearly, Rudolph, he might have his nose, but he's not complete without his antlers. Okay. So we need to take that semicircle that we glued earlier and we're going to use our Blendability's pens again. This time we're going to use the brown marker from the skin tone set. Right. And to make his antlers, we're going to use these. So these are some autumn wooden embellishments. There are lots of lovely little shapes in this pack. There are some acorns, different styles of leaf. They're really fun, aren't they? They're absolutely great, Paula. I've used these on lots and lots of different autumn um, and fall inspired projects in recent weeks, but I also, when I looked at them, I saw a pair of antlers. Okay. Um, I'm, sure, I'm not sure everyone else did, but for me, these were screaming out to be made right. into Rudolph antlers. So well, now you've highlighted it to me. I can see the antlers. There you go. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to use two of the solid leaves and two outlines. Right. We're just going to take our solid leaf and the thick end of our brush marker, and we're simply going to colour it until it's all nice and brown. It gives a beautiful streak-free mm. colour finish, regardless of the, the medium that right. you're that you're working on. So they have this lovely rich brown colour, which just complements our our box. Okay. And there you go. So all we're going to do is pop those inside the the, the larger outlines. It's fabulous. And then we're going to take our glue dots. And we're just going to attach a couple of glue dots. We need to hold them together okay. and just attach a couple of glue dots from the roll and then simply stick it onto our semicircular hat. That's great. And they're sort of really held on firmly, aren't they? They are. Glue dots, again, are a very good... It's always, as a crafter, it's always handy to have lots of different types of adhesive for your project. Sometimes a wet glue is more appropriate, like the one we use to actually make our helmet, or helmet, yeah. our hat. Yeah. Um, it looks a bit like a helmet, it looks a bit it like does. a Viking helmet. <laughs> it does a little. But sometimes a dry glue is better, and okay. glue dots are perfect for holding embellishments. So from the back, they just look like that. Yeah. And now, if you just, you kind of need to just stick your thumb into right. that bit and open it up slightly and it will fit over the handles but before we give him his hat there's no project would be complete unless we did a little bit of stamping absolutely so we need to stamp a tag that we can actually just tie onto the handles before we slip the hat on okay so yeah. the stamp set that we're going to use 
just bring in my inks and my blocks here, is this uh, lovely, lovely festive set called Endless Wishes. Um, it has some super sentiments. You can do kind of a mix and match approach and it's perfect for a small tag. Right. And the Kirby keepsake thinlet die actually comes with some very small tags that you can use so you don't even need to just cut a random piece of paper it comes with these three tag shapes okay. we're going to use this oval and so normally I would suggest that we stamp first and then we cut out but on yeah. this particular occasion um, I'm not going to and the reason for that is because this tag is very small and these stamps are photopolymer. So you right, can see okay. exactly where you're going to place your sentiment and you'll get perfect positioning. So I'll just run this through the big shot. So we have our very dinky little tag. I'm just gonna use some red and some chocolate chip to pick up on the colors of our reindeer. I think we'll use Joy to You okay. because that's nice and small and they will fit onto our blocks and they'll fit our tag nicely. And so we'll stamp our Joy first, okay. just literally take a little bit of red ink and can you see, yeah. you can absolutely see exactly where that's going. That's fabulous. So even though you're using a very, very small piece of paper, it's very easy to see. So, and then we'll just overlay that with our To You in chocolate chip to provide a little bit of contrast. And then we'll just move those to one side. And then all we need is some baker's twine. So I'm actually going to use this cherry cobbler because it will just give us a little piece of colour simply thread it through our tag so we just need to attach our tag to the box handle just tie it in a little bow and then we can place his hat on top just give that a little wiggle and there you go so here's our finished Rudolph it looks here's fabulous our Rudolph complete with tag just ready for some nice chocolate treats. Absolutely. I think they're amazing. And, and also, you know, um, potentially for table favours, you could use them in so many ways. Oh, very much so. This is a very versatile product, Paula. Mm. It could, you could use it for your, for your festive table, yeah. um, for your Christmas dinner, but also you could use it as a wedding favour. Absolutely. These boxes can be dressed up or down in so many different ways. Joanne, I know that Rudolph has lots of friends because I've had a sneak peek. So shall we take a look at them? So this one here I made, it's actually very, very simple. I stamped some snowflakes on the, uh, the inner two panels and then just put some washi tape along the sides, finished it with a little snowflake gem and a tag and some ribbon. Then kind of went one step further and took the same basic box die but actually cut some designer series paper right. and the two inner sides, just some nice coordinating coloured paper. Again, you could maybe use it to tie in with your colour scheme. If it's again for your, for your festive table, it would look uh, very, very pretty. We've got some fabulous craft cardstock um, currently. I, must say that is, I, I like the craft. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's very, very sturdy and it is two tone. So it's got one pattern on the outside and another pattern on the inside. So again, without any uh, real effort, yeah. you have a quite, kind of a nice varied box, a little stamp tag, maybe a, a, an embellishment just to kind of jazz it up yeah. a little bit. And I love that. It has, I think the craft has a real kind of vintage sort of. Absolutely. It's very kind of it's very yeah. in at the moment. Yeah, it's very absolutely. in vogue. And then we have another trio of friends uh, that matches Rudolph and some of these. So like the Santa here, you can have him with his with his face, he's kind of quite child friendly um, if you have him with his with his face or actually you can use this one without okay. and it will make quite a kind of an adult Santa. I think he's a little bit grown up <laughs> even without his head. You can tell that he's a Santa box. Um, the next one is this fun little chap who is one of Santa's elves. Right. Um, again, he looks kind of, you can tell yeah. he's an elf without his head, but I quite like him with his head and his little kind of glittery hat. And this one, I actually made a little naughty but nice tag <laughs> as well. And kind of- That's so much fun. So again, you can kind of customize them. Mm -hmm. 
And then lastly, the snowman, who does already have some chocolates in, so he's nice and heavy. Um, and with this one, again, I just made a nice, simple little kind of punched snowman's hat. Use some fabulous uh, red ribbon, which adds a nice dramatic scarf. And once again, uh, just a little tag. Yeah. to go on to the edge so that's our that's collection awesome. of festive boxes and they're amazing and, and i love that really they're they're quite straightforward to make and um and you could probably do them in quite a short space of time absolutely have. they're 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 very straightforward and you can you can spend more time decorating them yeah. if if you have the time but actually you can do a very basic box with just some small um kind of a little bit of ribbon yeah. maybe the odd embellishment and you could make lots of them so it doesn't matter how many people you've got coming for christmas <laughs> dinner no excuses for not having nice table favors <laughs> so are these going to be decorating your festive table this absolutely <laughs> they they will be taking pride of place joanne thanks so much for being here we thoroughly enjoyed enjoyed having you here and you have shared amazing winter treats that have certainly inspired me and I'm sure will be inspiring many others out there. So Joanne, before I round up, perhaps you can share with us what's been your best moment so far as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. There have been many, Paula. I <laughs> guess the some of the most outstanding ones are, I was privileged to have been asked to present at a recent UK regional training event and it was such a lovely feeling being able to share skills and inspire other demonstrators. But even sometimes it's the small things that count. So Absolutely. recently I celebrated a birthday and I had a customer in one of my card classes who wrote me a poem um, about the fun that they have in their card classes. And it absolutely oh, touched my heart because yeah. it made me think I really am making a difference to people's just kind of everyday lives. That's fantastic. What a lovely story to share. Joanne's projects are utterly gorgeous. They're fun, they're simple to make, and I know that recipients of these treats will absolutely love them. So if you're looking to make winter treats and find out more about our product range, or perhaps you're interested to know more about becoming a demonstrator, then I recommend you contact your local demonstrator. If you don't have one, then you can visit our demonstrator finder on our website or visit our online shop. So thanks again for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.